I'm exploring the Griffith region in New South Wales. It's a bustling town with a thriving agricultural industry and a rich food culture. More than 60% of the people in Griffith claim Italian heritage and the main street has some amazing Italian restaurants as well as this iconic Italian deli, La Piccola Grossoria. Buonasera. Buonasera. Wow. Come stai? I'm in heaven. Benvenuti. Welcome. Oh, it's so nice to be here. Sam, I've been told if I come to Griffith, I have to come to La Piccola Grossaria. Very good pronunciation. Is that... Oh, good. Very Phew. good. <laughs> it's the institution, right? This is where you come if you want your Italian fix. How long has this deli been here? 18 years. We started in 2003 at this shop front. Yeah. I worked with my two sisters yeah. and tried to keep it, again, simple, authentic. It's Reminds me of my childhood. I feel like coming in here, I feel like I'm at home, particularly because whenever I'm around prosciutto or ham and lots of cheese, I'm very happy. I feel like I'm at home. Everyone's so but happy. also, tell me about the culture. It's very multicultural here in Griffith, isn't it? It is. So, obviously, it's roughly about 60% Italian, right. uh, but there's a great multicultural feel. I, I love yeah. it here. And here, you can even find locally made goodies, just like these cakes. Your sisters make these yeah. cakes. Yeah, so we've got homemade orange and yogurt cakes. Yeah. We've got cannoli, tiramisu, beignet. But you know what? I'm a bit peckish. I would love to try some of your amazing deli cuts. <gasps> cheese, don't forget the cheese. We'll mix it up a little bit. Cheese, Strong, cheese. mild, keep it simple. I think it's just the way you say it and you use your hands, the Italian way. It's oh, nice. I can't help it. It's just connected. Yeah. I do it all. <laughs> For the last hour, I've been wandering around on the Piccolo family farm. It is absolutely stunning. And if you're a foodie, this is the place to be. I mean, it's got everything from all types of herbs. And look at this beautiful broccoli that I've just picked right behind me. The Piccolo family have been developing this farm for over 30 years. And this is just another example of how strong the Italian heritage is here in Griffith. So, sticking to the Italian theme, I'm going to do a salt in bocca. And usually that's done with some veal. But instead of that, I found some beautiful quail. Have a look at that. I adore quail. These come from the Mai quail farm just around the corner. So, I thought I should use them. And I also want to show you at home how easy it is to prepare because sometimes it can be slightly daunting, but if you can have chicken, you can definitely have quail. The flavour is just incredible. So I've just air dried them, and the next thing you want to do is just take off the wingtips, just like you would be preparing a chicken. If you see it like that, it's the same anatomy, it's very easy to do. And you know, there's this misconception, oh, there's not that much meat on quail. That is incorrect. There is quite a lot of meat on the bones. So the easiest way to prep this for a saltimbocca is just to see this breastbone here. And you want to follow that with a really sharp knife. So we're going to go down one side and following the bone, we're just taking the breast off the bone. And just with the tip of your knife, just follow the bones. And the bones are quite soft, so it is easy to get through. Now, I'm going to keep the thigh and the drumstick on because so much flavour there. And we'll just cut that straight down there and you'll see that there's another joint just at that thigh and leg. Just cut straight through that nice and easy. OK, that's the first one. So you can see for presentation how gorgeous this is going to be. And we've got quite a lot of meat there. So I'm going to now add a piece of sage, sage and quail best mate, so two of those. Then I'm just going to season it with a little bit of salt, a crack of pepper, and we'll just fold this up just like a little envelope. And we're going to wrap this in some prosciutto. And when you're choosing your prosciutto, make sure you've got some fat around the prosciutto because that's going to melt away to stick our quail together. It's also going to give the sauce a lovely flavour. So we'll wrap that up. And just to make sure that stays in place, a few toothpicks. And we'll just pop that straight through so it fastens. You want the seam side on the bottom. First one done, let's do a few more of these.
Okay, the quail salt in Boca is ready for the pan. I've been preheating my pan, so on a medium to high heat, a good glug of extra virgin olive oil. And I like to flour my salt in Boca first because this is going to help thicken out the sauce. So just pat the meat in there, shake off the excess, and then in it goes. Nice sizzle, great. We'll do the others. Again, shaking it off. Now, there still is a leg bone there, so you do need to take that into account when you're cooking this, and that's why I'm going to be adding some stock and some white wine too. That's going to help steam it up. So we'll get a lovely, even cook on the quail. Shake that off. And the last one, and then they go. Just swirl the pan so each quail is touched by that oil so we get a gorgeous golden colour. And I just love my sage, so there's no reason why you can't add a little more to this. So a few of those in there. Oh, it smells good. You want it to be just golden and you'll see how they start to puff up a little bit. Just fantastic. They take about three to four minutes on each side, depending on how you like to cook it. I like to cook it as if it was chicken, just all slightly under chicken, so it stays super juicy. Oh, look at that. That's what we're after. And you can see that that gorgeous prosciutto is essentially sticking to the flesh of the quail. So it's encased in it, and it's a nice, crusty piece of prosciutto. yum -o. While they're finishing off cooking, the veggies that I got. So broccoli, you know, I like to leave them as is the small little ones. The big ones, we're just gonna cut straight down, stalk and all. I mean, the stalks have so much flavor. So just leave them looking quite natural. Leaves of broccoli, sometimes we just throw them out, but they are so sweet. Just use them as a green so they can go as is. And another really interesting veg that I found is this one here, it's actually part of the radicchio family, so a bitter green. Really nice when it's just sautéed down. It goes beautifully with our quail. So I'm just going to just cut that into a few little chunks. And now we can start adding our wine. So just some local white wine I've got here. We'll add that to the pan. And that's just going to reduce and thicken up slightly. We want to cook off that alcohol. And just by adding that wine, it's going to steam in there and cook the little drumsticks much faster. Okay. I want to take our saltimbocca out now. That is ready. I'm just going to pop them on the board. Oh, smells so good. Fantastic and stock. I've been soaking some currants just to give this a little agridolce feeling, so salty, sour flavour from the wine. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon of them and then the stock. So I add them to the hot stock because I want them to soften slightly. All right, let's give that a bit of a twirl. The flour that we added to the saltimbocca is enough just to slightly thicken this and our veggies, so we'll pop them in the sauce. So it's all a one pan wonder here. Don't worry about boiling them. These are so fresh. I still want them to have that lovely crunch. So they can go in and our radicchio can go in. I like to add a little glug of oil, just a small amount to bring the whole thing together. Some butter, so a few knobs of butter or a Juzzy style one, which is quite a lot. <laughs> Just these bitter greens, the broccoli, so good with butter. Heat off, let's plate up. We'll grab our tongs and let's just serve this up in a generous manner. So we'll just pile them up in the middle. We'll pour some of this gorgeous sauce with those little currants throughout it. Like a little pool of sauce would be nice. Looks good. And the salt in boca can just sit just nicely over the top like that. Nothing else required and I can't resist. I'm going to have to try one of these salt in bocas. Make sure before you serve it to your friends and family, take that little toothpick out. 
gonna cut this straight down the centre. Oh, look at that. That is perfectly cooked. A little taste. Mmm, that quail is so tender. I love this dish. You can see how easy it is to do. And the best thing is, not too much washing up, only one pan, that's what I like. If you like this, where's my glass of wine? I need a glass of wine with this.